Good morning, everyone. It's a little bit after 1030. We kind of like to get started. It's a busy day, a great day for uh, Purdue Boilermakers and uh, certainly for the School of Industrial Engineering. Uh, we are very excited for everyone that is here. My name is Jerry Alberts. I'm Director of Development and Alumni Relations for the school. Uh, Elizabeth, to my left here, is a student advisor for the undergraduate program. She would normally be standing in this spot, and she actually really should be standing in this spot more than I, but unfortunately, and on a timely basis, she lost her voice. So if you can see her in me, I would appreciate it, because then you might enjoy this experience a little better. How about that? <laughs> Uh, we are very excited to have a distinguished group of our alums here this morning who have taken time out of uh, their busy schedules for homecoming to share with you uh, some of their background and, and experiences and why industrial engineering is such a fantastic program to be part of, but I will reserve that for them. Uh, but I would like to introduce them if I could, starting with Bob Nominson. Bob, here. Bob. Uh, earned his BSIE degree in 1983. He later earned his MBA from Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern. Early in his career, Bob worked in sales with IBM Management Consulting with Erst & Young and Operation and Information Systems with Labbit Laboratories. Abbott Laboratories. In 94, Bob founded InfoTrust and built the company as a healthcare and information technology services business before partnering with Intel RX in 2003. Am I pronouncing that right, Mo? You are. Yeah. Intel RX? Doing great. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while I get a win. Uh, Intel RX was acquired by Milliman in 2005, where Bob is currently a principal with the Milwaukee office and managing director of Milliman Intelscript, a business that provides online prescription histories and related risk management software tools to insurance companies. Welcome, Bob. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, Juan, uh, Juan Diego Valesquez. Good enough. Uh, okay. Uh, Juan Diego was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia, joining Purdue University in 1994 as an undergraduate student in industrial engineering. Uh, Juan remained at Purdue for his graduate degrees, earning his MSIE in 2003 and PhD in 2009. After completing his studies, Juan worked as assistant director of TA and curricular development at Purdue for four years, designing and implementing instructional development programs for graduate teaching assistants, as well as GTA orientation programs in collaboration with the Teaching Academy and the annual new faculty teaching orientation. Juan joined the Office of Strategic Planning and Assessment in the College of Engineering in 2012 as Managing Director of Strategic Initiatives. In this role, the scope of his responsibilities expanded to include primary operations to support two major faculty and staff-led initiatives, one being the Purdue Systems Collaboratory and the Columbia Purdue Initiative. Juan is passionate about bringing Purdue to Columbia and Columbia to Purdue, and makes it a business to know that all Columbian Graduate Fellowship grantees who have been admitted and need assistance in navigating all the details of matriculating as graduate students at Purdue. Juan, welcome. We have Carlos Marino. And Carlos uh, flew in this, I guess it was last night, right? Last night. Coming in from San Salvador. So, uh, is it El Salvador? <laughs> is this capital of the country? It's close. They're right. Okay, okay. He flew in a long way last <laughs> night to be here. Okay. Carlos is a procurement director for Kimberly Clark's Latin American operation. He received his BS in industrial engineering for Purdue in 1994 and his MBA from Thunderbird, where he was a Fulbright scholar in 2000. Carlos has been with Kimberly Clark for more than 20 years in various supply chain functions. He's been a pioneer in optimization systems and has played key roles in the company's rapid, ex rapid expansion in corporate citizenship in neighboring communities throughout Latin America. His career has been characterized by continuous growth in manufacturing, logistics, Continuous improvement and procurement in consumer goods supply chains across several geographies. He's recruited, developed, and motivated top performing teams to share his passion for excellence and integrity. In addition to his IE practice, Carlos is a regular contributor to several educational causes in El Salvador, promoting science, technology, engineering, and math. He's an enthusiastic robotics fan who helped with a rural elementary school club in Sitio del Niño, was I okay with that? Uh, close to San Salvador, 
which won against major odds international recognition in Colombia and Germany. Carlos enjoys analytics, cross-culture communication, and traveling. He's been a member of the Purdue President's Council since 2003 and received the Outstanding Industrial Engineering Award from Purdue in 2015. So Carlos, welcome. Thank you. Next we have Mike Hurd. Mike has 25 years of operations and technology experience and 20 years in the financial service industry. Mike is trusted leader for Washington National. He has extensive experience in sales support as well as administrative operations and technology. Mike earned his BSIE and MSIE from Purdue University in 1989 before serving for more than seven years in the U.S. Air Force as a civil engineer. Mike joined GE Financial in 1997 as a manager of service quality and led their group life and health operations from 2001 to 2005. Mike moved on from GE to work for Genworth Financial and CNO Financial Group, where he was appointed president of Washington National Insurance Company in March of this year. As a leading provider of supplemental health and life insurance, Washington National serves nearly 1 million policyholders and 25,000 employer groups throughout 2,000 independent agents. And I guess that's worldwide, isn't it, Mike? Uh, just U.S. Just the U.S. Okay, great. Welcome. Welcome. Steve Dumbald. Steve hails from Dayton, Ohio, and graduated from Purdue in 1972 with a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering. Following graduation, Steve earned his medical degree from the Medical College of Toledo in 1975, completing his residency at Good Samaritan Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio, and fellowship at the University of Alabama School of Medicine in 1982. Since then, Steve has distinguished himself in the medical field and presently serves, uh, actually he's newly retired, but he recently served as the Assistant Clinical Professor of Medicine at the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. Was I right with that? Yes. Are you, yes. Retired. you are retired. <laughs> and he's enjoying his sailboat experience all the time. He let me know that last night so often. Uh, so thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for being here. Sherry Eberhard. Sherry graduated from Purdue in 2016 with a BSIE and a minor in management. While at Purdue, Sherry was a Division I athlete competing on the cross country and track and field teams. She earned Big Ten Distinguished Scholar Athlete during her junior and senior years and earned Athletic Director's High Honor Roll. While competing, she was a member of Emerging Leaders Boilermaker Athletic Council to develop leadership skills and act as a liaison and voice between administration and her team. She was also involved in Alpha Pi Mu, the Industrial Engineering Honor Society, leading as treasurer for a semester and president for a year, and was a board member of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineer, IISE, acting as the philanthropy chair for a semester and the professional development committee for a semester. Sherry currently works at Eli Lilly in supply chain at the uh, parenteral? Parenteral. Parenteral. Uh -huh. Injectables. Injectables, okay, site, working with injectable medicines, there we go. Devices and packaging. In this role, she collaborates with many departments and works closely with the launch leaders, helping to organize the infrastructure needed at the site to launch a new drug to the market. So, Sarah, welcome. Sarah, Sherry, <laughs> Sherry, sorry, Sherry. I had Sarah in my mind. <laughs> Regov Gandhi. Raghav graduated in May of in uh, 2017 with a minor in psychology. During his time at Purdue, Raghav participated in IISE and helped found Purdue Solutions, a student-led consulting organization. He interned with Tesla Motors and served as technical leader for his senior design project with Janus Development Services. Raghav now resides and works in Chicago, Illinois with PricewaterhouseCoopers as a consultant. He is passionate about innovation, design, and customer-centered technology implementation. Raghav, welcome back. Mike Bailey. Mike is currently a junior studying industrial engineering at Purdue. Mike began his career at Purdue as a computer and information systems student, but decided to get smart and change directions in 2015 to pursue a BSIE. Mike is involved in a diverse assortment of activities on campus, including undergraduate research. Mike. Happy to have you here. And with that, yes. I turn it to Elizabeth. Oh, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, can you hear me OK? <laughs> is it all right? Um, so just to, uh, just this is our first time 
uh, doing this, holding this panel. It kind of emerged out of a, a many different areas. Many people had an idea of how can we engage first year engineering students and, and those that don't know much about IE um, before they, it's time to make that decision. And so uh, we've put this panel together. It's the first time we've done it. So thank you all for coming. Um, and so with that, I'm gonna start off with the first question and then um, you guys out there, you'll have a chance to ask some questions yourself as you get to know a little bit more, okay? All right, so our first question, and I'll just start over with Juan over here and then just briefly um, in a few sentences, just answering how did you end up in IE? And then how has your perception of IE changed or evolved in that time since then? Uh, so I ended up in IE um, <coughs> because I actually have a family member that's in the audience that also went to IE. So that's how I ended up at Purdue in IE. <laughs> um, originally, I was going to go to uh, Georgia Tech. And then uh, thankfully, things happen because they're meant to happen. And so I actually ended up coming to Purdue and uh, had not regretted it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my perception of, what, of how it has changed um, compared to when I arrived is that I, I always thought uh, with IE what you would have is an ability to um, really put yourself into any position that you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that attracted me to it is that you get to see a little bit of engineering from as many um, angles as you can. And um, thankfully, I think it has been reinforced with uh, my 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 further education at uh, Purdue, and so I've come to conclude that uh, one of the things that I heard a lot as an undergraduate from my peers in other engineering schools is that you're an imaginary engineer. <laughs> and, I, and I like to think that it's actually kind of true because I've sort of imagined myself in the two positions that I have had at Purdue, and they were actually sort of crafted around skill sets and um, attributes that I could contribute to the organization. So, so Thank you. that'll be my answer. Hi, Mike. Oh, all right, it's on. All right, so um, as he mentioned, I was in uh, technology at first. Um, I quickly got up <laughs> out of there. Um, I just absolutely didn't like the major. Um, so that's kind of how I fell into engineering. And then industrial engineering was because a friend of mine told me a lot of people have unreal answers. IEs give you like real answers with the resources that you have. And uh, just having that practical outlook on things and being able to touch so many different things and so many different assets as far as you know companies and doing research and doing do whatever you want to do, having the ability to be so versatile in engineering while being in IE is really what drew my attention and why I'm here today. Thank you. Um, Mike, if you would mind. Yeah, I think I, I, I was here. I, I, I was a freshman engineer like many of you, and I just knew I wanted to be an engineer uh, and didn't know specifically. And that was probably at a time where IE was starting to go through some transformation, but it was just about human-machine interface. And I liked the introduction of the human element, and that's what drew me uh, uh, to industrial engineering. It wasn't it, what we can talk later. It was not because I someday wanted to be a senior executive in an insurance company. So the, the, the journey is different, yeah. Okay, with, with my story, I, when I came to Purdue, I was looking for the, the best place that I could uh, study and help rebuild my country. The Salvador had been going through a civil war that started in 1977 and it ended in 1992. So while I was here at Purdue, I wanted to come and, and help, help me get the best education possible that I could apply in order to help rebuild the nation. So that was what drove me here. And um, I've always been, been interested in collaboration across different functions. And I think IE provides you with that. You can get a table together, whether engineering, whether management, pharm pharmaceutical, any type of major, and IEs can make it click. And we can make and drive the link across all the different functions. Plus, I enjoy... Um, a lot of what we call wicked problems, those don't have, don't have a very quick answer or solution that you need to study and study over time. So I, that's what IE is to me. It's, it's that ability to make sure and, and over time that you have the right tools, knowledge, skills, and communication 
to help um, improve whatever you do, whether a process or a manufacturing environment, IE will give you those tools and, and help <coughs> change the world. Thank you. Sherry? So for me, um, growing up, I always loved math and science. I knew that I wanted to go into engineering. I really liked the application part. Um, figuring out which type of engineering. Um, originally, I thought possibly civil, possibly EE. But with that, you're a little bit more limited in what industry you can go in. Um, mechanical is pretty broad as well, but my brother was in mechanical engineering, and I'm very competitive, so I didn't want to do that. So um, I thought the IE was a great fit for me. Both my parents have um, master's in business degrees, so um, I figured someday maybe I want to go into management, maybe I want to go more the business side. Um, so I chose IE. It seemed to be a great fit, and I loved it. Um, something I've realized since graduating is that IE really does develop those technical skills as well. At the end of the day, it's an engineering degree, so you do get exposure to the business side a little bit, but um, at the end of the day, you have those fundamentals and um, engineering first principles that you can always go back to. And so no matter where you go, that's always um, just great to have like in your back pocket. Thank you. I'm Bob. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so exciting to see you all sitting, sitting in that chair because, man, I was there just seems like a few months ago going through the same thoughts and wondering, what the heck am I going to do? I had no idea. I think when I was graduating, I wasn't still exactly sure what I wanted to do. And honestly, even now, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to do when I grow up, even though kind of in the twilight of my career, I've done a few different things. You know, some people would argue I, I can't hold a job down. You know, I've, I've had five, this is my fifth job in my career. But I tell you, I made the right decision. Industrial engineering is so versatile. If you think about it, I mean, if you want flexibility, you're, you choose industrial engineering. If you know what you want to do and you know you want to be a mechanical engineer, you know you want to be an electrical engineer, go do that. But if you're not sure, this is a great discipline. Because you can do traditional engineering for a whole career. You can transition into finance and law and medicine and look what all the other people are doing here. I mean, I've, I've had a career in technology and uh, uh, traditional engineering for about six years before I kind of converted to the dark side into sales and marketing. And then, you know, I created a couple of businesses and, and I've been, been enjoying it. But, but for me, what I really liked was, to me, industrial engineering is about process management, right? Doing stuff better, cheaper, and faster. And that applies everywhere, you know? Um, all work is a process. I forget if somebody famous said that, but all work is a process, meaning, you know, if you can, you know, you can measure it, you can manage it, right? So the long-term potential for industrial engineering is there. I mean, our, the, the world is changing dramatically, as we, know, as we know, right? I mean, technology is, you know, processor speeds are doubling every 18 months, you know, Moore's Law or whatever. Your, your career, your, the technology that's going to be uh, influencing and shaping your career over the next 30, 40 years you know, is going to change things dramatically. All the professions are going to be very different, but there's still always going to be a need to do things better, cheaper, faster. I think that drives human nature. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, my, uh, my dad was the owner of a metal fabrication business when I was growing up. And uh, as a kid, I worked in the, in the plant and and did all that kind of stuff. It was kind of some production line work, and he drilled in my head efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. And so I, I kind of knew I, I wanted to be an engineer, so uh, I came here. I had an uncle who had come here and, and kind of fell in love with this place. And uh, so industrial engineering, because of that efficiency thing, seemed to be a, a real natural fit. Now, in a way, it's a curse because I don't think I can tie my shoes without thinking about the most efficient way to do it. But, uh, anyway, it's had really good things. Um, but I think the, the thing that I would have you keep in mind is that uh, three words, you never know. And what I mean by that is you never know what you're learning now is going to have a huge influence on you in the future and how it's going to really benefit you in the future. Now, I'm a nephrologist, a, a kidney doctor, and um, one of the things that, one of the courses that I hated my freshman year was uh, inorganic chemistry. 
It seemed to have no rhyme or reason. It was just memorization. But I can tell you that as a nephrologist, I use that stuff all the time, basic chemistry. And uh, so I think that's the theme I would leave you with, uh, is, is you never know. And the other thing, for me, as opposed to process, for me, industrial engineering is about systems. That worked extremely well for me in my career, not only on a sort of a macro level, you know, organizing a practice. Uh, in 1983, I set up a computerized medical record system in our, in our, in our practice, which was like really first, uh, really way ahead. And, um, but systems also apply in medicine. You've got your physiologic systems, you've got pathologic systems, and then what really makes it fun about medicine is you've got the psych psychological system. You know, how do you convince people to do what they should do? How do you encourage them to get through really tough times? So for me, my career has been, has been really wonderful, uh, and uh, I, I owe a huge amount to the School of Industrial Engineering. It was a great education. Thank you. And rock off. All right. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so when I first came to Purdue in 2013, I felt <clears throat> that I didn't really know what exactly I wanted to do, like a lot of people on campus. So I was willing to explore like different majors, and I knew I wanted to be an engineer. So the first semester here, I was like, I want to be a mechanical engineer. And then I go home for winter break, and I'm like, maybe electrical will be better. And then the next semester, I was like, I really want to do chemical. So <laughs> that, that gave me the feeling that something's not right, right? I'm not comfortable. I don't know what I want. And I, I really want to be flexible. I want to go into something that's not going to uh, pigeonhole me into this one discipline, and I have a variety of options to choose from and see what I really like. And that's what industrial engineering did for me. So my first internship was in process control at Subaru of Indiana. So that was like I was, I was seeing some real world IE, quality control, <coughs> how manufacturing processes work. And I was like, I love IE, but I'm not sure about this. So I, I started looking into some more like futuristic technology and how you can leverage data to make change in the society. So then I did an internship at Tesla Motors and I was like, wow, I, I really love this. It's futuristic and even though a lot of people here are not IEs, I can bring like, I, I can bring my processes, I can bring systems and I can bring a sort of thinking um, capacity that nobody, nobody really, Nobody really thought this the way I did, and I, I could bring new perspectives to the table. So as an industrial engineer, I, I learned that you don't have to be in a typical IE job to make impact. You can drive organizational change and create great products and create a great impact on your company, um, even though you're not doing typical IE stuff. And that's when I realized in manufacturing that you know, I love this stuff, and I know what the major can do. I want to take it to the next level. So my third internship I did in consulting, and that's where I saw, like, you interact with clients, you interact with businesses, and, you know, you don't really know uh, your, your niche yet because you're, you're an industrial engineer, you know, you're still learning things, and you're in a... So I was, for my case, I was in a power and utilities company, and... I had no idea how the industry worked, and I was really overwhelmed. Well, within a few weeks, I picked up the processes and started making impact, even though I was an intern. So at the end of it, what I realized was that IE is so broad and flexible that it's really hard to define it as, like, in, in, a, in a single word, you know? It's, it's something that you can use in a variety of disciplines and uh, different careers and, and drive change. And for me, I was driven, and I knew I want to Wherever I am, I want to make an impact and make people's lives better. So now I'm really uh, passionate about making customer experience better, and that's something IE can do. Just to give you an example, we have human factors, um, which is one of our coursework, and we learn how you make systems better for people. Like, you all have iPhones. Look at you know, the Tesla car. It's all about making that experience better. It's all about feeling good about the system, and it's all about convenience. And sort of IE sort of drives that, that thinking. So overall, it really worked out, out for me, and I love the major. Really recommend it. Thank you all. Um, right now, we're going to open it up. So we have some runners with some microphones and whatnot. Um, does anyone have any questions right now? And when you, uh, if you ask a question, you can see your name, what year you are, and then your question. That'd be great. Hi. 
I'm Rishabh, uh, I'm a sophomore. So one question that I had, like, I'm sure all of you were super involved on campus, uh, had a, have had a great professional career, but what's that one thing you would like to say to yourself in college, maybe when you were an underclassman that you would do differently, or maybe you would like to have done more that would prepare you better for the IE career? And we can just, if people want to kind of jump in there, we don't have to go completely in order. So I'll jump in because I've always, I, I, there was specifically one thing that I always thought I wanted to do again, and you're going to think this is silly. So I'm originally from Colombia. So coming here, most people would assume that that's sort of like a study abroad because I moved from my country, my culture to the US. And if I was to do it again, I would do a study abroad in a completely different culture because the world has changed so much that any any learning that can happen outside of the classroom, any experiences you get to appreciate a different culture, to learn, it forces so many changes on your, upon yourself that I wish when I was an undergrad there were more options to have gone to Asia or Af Africa the way that they're now. They were, I don't think they were as unfortunate curriculum as too strict at times, so it makes it challenging, but I've, if I could have done it again, I would have done a study abroad in a non-Spanish, non non-English speaking country. So um, I'd just like to echo that. I would say the same thing as I wish I would have studied abroad. But along with that, taking advantage of the di diversity that we have here at Purdue. So there's like a huge diverse culture. And I don't think that I stepped out of my comfort zone enough to get to know some students, maybe from other countries, that could have given me almost not a, a full study abroad experience here, but more of um, an understanding of other cultures. And now working at Lilly, it's, it's a very global company. And um, understanding the cultures that we're selling to for these, these drug products um, is a huge factor in like pricing and how we go about selling, um, who our markets are that we're selling to, um, how much regulation they have. So um, just knowing and understanding different cultures and ways of life um, no matter where you are, that will help you in the future, just as we're um, becoming more diverse um, and just have different mindsets going forward. So, And I would echo Sherry's comments about getting involved. I, I think if I look back and the one thing, I would say uh, uh, I, I should have been more involved in some more extracurricular stuff. We, we were walking down the, the street and I saw a couple guys in tuxedos walking by, and I, I, I said to my wife, I said, oh, those guys are Purdue Glee Club. And I said, gosh darn it, I always regretted not trying out for that. And, and I, I think I was all caught up with trying to get really good grades and trying to learn the stuff. And you know, you're not in an easy curriculum. This is tough stuff, and it takes time. But I think, as I look back on it, I, I think I, I could have done. In fact, I, I, w I have a song I'd like to sing now. If, <laughs> Abby, is that okay if I? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I'll live out your dream now. <laughs> yeah. <You're> right. Um, <laughs> I would definitely, re uh, I would definitely reinforce that to do. Don't just do resume building things. And when I was here, as an ROTC cadet, and everything I did was military, hanging around people with short hair and clean shave, and I'm going to be the best military guy and engineer that I can be. And I wish I had done some random weird clubs, you know, just fun yeah. stuff. I, I have a, a kid, a, a daughter that's a senior over at Cranert. She was on the Purdue sailing team. I don't know where the water comes from here, <laughs> but she had a blast and she met people she never would have run into in other parts of her life. And I was so jealous when she told, she came home uh, first Thanksgiving, said, I'm on the sailing team. How does that happen? I wish I had done something like that. So I would really consider do something that isn't for your resume, but just for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess like currently being here, I will reinforce that. Um, so I guess. I do a lot. Um, I've gone. I've been on a rock climbing team. I've been, you know, long uh, longboarding. I've been shooting rifles. I I've done it all. And I would say, like, I can't narrow it down to one. Unfortunately, I would say my, my two things would be, it's okay 
to not know, like right now. Like it, it, it's very okay to just be like, you know what, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I like this, this, and this, and eventually I'll get there. Because like a lot of people have put that pressure on themselves. Like I have to have it figured out right now. I only got four years. I gotta make the best out of my four years. I gotta drive it home. And it, it's okay to just have no idea right now. You go out, you, you venture, like they're saying, you network, you figure out, okay, I like to do this, and you know what, I have an interest in this. That's not, you know, resume building. Um, secondly, I would say, like, you have to push yourself. That, that's the main thing. Like, it's really easy to kind of like, I guess, surround yourself with people that you're familiar with or like just kind of like naturally gravitate to people you're familiar with. But like, I try at least to know like three or four different names in every room I walk in. So, you know, even if it's like, you know what, I might be a little late for this next class, but you know what, I haven't met you yet. How high are you? And like, that's how I got really close with the staff here. Oops, sorry. But with the staff here and just being able to connect and just being able to have that ability. Like, you know what? I don't know you and I'm gonna get to know you. Oh, you, you like to do this, now I like to do this. And now we're, now we're branching and now we're talking about something completely unrelated. And now, you know, Saturday after that, like Friday night after that exam, you got somebody you can go just do something completely random and like find a way to de-stress. Cause a lot of people think like not studying, you're de-stressing. But you have to like take the time to like have your mind relax and wind down. So those are my two points. And there's one quick thing I really wanna add. And it's, it's a great question cause I've been thinking about it over the last few months and I'm like, man, I wish I could go back and do this. So if you end up choosing industrial engineering, you'll definitely, and you're looking at different careers, you'll hear the three words, leverage your network a lot, and that's great, you should leverage your network. And I did some of that. I reached out to like professionals and executives in different companies and try and get jobs, and it works. But I never thought about networking too much with the professors here. And I, st I, I started doing that in my senior year, and I, and I learned that there are a lot of professors here who are passionate who are actually driving the industry because they do the actual research behind technology and drive some of change. And they're so passionate about what they're doing, they love their jobs. And if you think about it, there's hundreds of professors on campus, and even if you can get like five minutes with them and ask them about what they're passionate about and what their advice is, and get mentors on campus that can really help you drive your career and know what you really want, so really leverage that. And the second thing is, I was always like thinking about grades and I really want to perform well and get a good GPA and things like that. And it's good from like a job perspective, but really have fun because at the end of it, like when you start working and I'm going through this now, it's overwhelming and like you're always busy and you're trying to be successful and you're new in the industry. Um, it's like you had those four years where you could have done, you know, a lot of good stuff professionally, like research wise and, you know, sort of build your personality, but at the same time, like have fun because, you know, like, it's, it's a great major, you know, it's not as intense as many of like other disciplines where you're very technically focused in this one thing. And so that gives you the opportunity to like connect with fellow IEs and hang out with them and learn their perspective and sort of enjoy uh, your time here. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a sophomore in industrial engineering. And I was just curious, um, what kind of inter international presence does industrial engineering have? And what experiences have you been afforded, internationally speaking, because of industrial engineering? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. Um, at least I can, I can tell you about Latin America and, and also from the multinational company I work with, Kimberly Clark. IE has a lot of exposure. And, and a lot of uh, people like IEs, especially outside also of, of the United States, because they know how to how to fix and solve processes and prevent uh, errors from happening. Right. So a lot of the times, the exposure that that we get is, "Hi, you're an IE. You can help me um, think about this problem and, and get a group of people also together to do it." So it does have a lot. I mean, in in Latin America, most of the major universities, IE is probably one of their top programs that you'll find it's, it's very competitive out there as well. So the, the bar keeps being raised all the time. So as IEs, it's, a, it's very much a, a, a career that has a lot of exposure and a lot of growth potential. Mm. So if I can add, Jerry, can you stand up for a minute? Can you show everybody the back of your shirt? <laughs> so, so I think in many countries in Latin America, the perception is and you might see it with some of the international students, especially Latin Americans that you might have in the classroom with you. Um, it's a profession that they, the, the, the students and the families believe they're gonna be the leaders of the industry when they go back to their countries. So they're gonna become that CEO that Jerry had in his T-shirt. 
be a small company, be it a large company. Uh, I think if I'm not wrong, Abby can correct me. I think one of the largest schools of industrial engineering actually is in Colombia. Uniandes has one of the largest programs. It's the largest school in this pr private university, it's the largest school of any of the engineering schools within that uh, um, college. So I think in the case of Latin America, it's, it's probably the most, I would say it's the most sought after degree uh, if you have any desire to lead a company, be entrepreneurial, um, or go internationally. <laughs> yes. yes, it's true. And, and just a little segue from that. So Dr. McComb and Dr. Deshmuk are here, and there's a program that industrial engineers do in Rome. Um, and I, I did that this past, this, this year actually. And I got the opportunity to see like healthcare system and engineered services in Rome, Italy. And in that program, you can sort of see what the inefficiencies are. In, in different systems, and it's not just the United States. The world has so many problems anywhere you go, and it's not just political problems, technology problems, like you, processes, systems. There are so many things that need to be fixed. And no matter where you go, you can apply like sort of the principles of IE to make things more efficient, to do them as cheap as you can, and to do them fast. And that's what I sort of learned in Italy too, that you know, there are some things that need to be fixed. And the reason that they're not fixed is not because people are not looking at them. There are several challenges and they're like complex systems that exist out there. But as industrial engineers, we can sort of you know, work together and see how we can solve those problems. And these problems are really complex and hard and you're not gonna solve them in a day. But like to get, to get that thinking going and to like start critically thinking about how you can improve the society, I would say like no matter where you are, you can apply this discipline. I'm going to plug healthcare here because uh, <laughs> uh, there are so many problems in healthcare, not only in this country, but worldwide. And it has to do, again, I believe, with systems analysis. We currently do such a poor job in healthcare of analyzing data, let alone collecting data. We don't even do that very well. And it's because of this late entry of computer usage in healthcare. There is a huge opportunity there because as you know in the United States and again in worldwide, this is a huge cost for us in our society and there's so many levels of need uh, that, boy, I tell you, if you wanna go someplace, it's really a wide open field right now for people who can think problem solve, collect data, analyze data, evaluate systems, and, and this is the school to learn it. Hello everyone, my name's Red, they call it Red. I came from China, I'm a sophomore of industrial engineering now. So I have a question on that. So because a lot of engineers, they will decide to join to the work life or just have a master degree. So I was thinking about as an IE major, do you recommend us just to work after our undergraduate grade or try to achieve a master degree? And then another question is that if you could go back to your college life, what would you do to increase your IE capacity? Thank you. So uh, I like the question about working after undergraduate or master's, right? But I think at the end of it, it comes down to why you wanna do that. Do you just wanna do that because it looks good on your resume and like your professional profile, or do you wanna do it because you're passionate about it? So if you're really passionate about something, I feel like it, it will make sense for you to, to do your master's, to do your PhD in that field and, and research and, and sort of drive the industry. But if you're not passionate about that and you wanna work, you go work, so it's, it's really about why you wanna do that, and because at the end of the day, if you, don't, if you don't love what you're doing, you're not gonna be happy, so if you do something you're really passionate about, and something that you enjoy every day, I think it will be worth it in the long run. So, um, I can give kind of both sides the argument, so I have a friend who stayed in undergrad, uh, and then stayed and did their masters, um, and I think it was very beneficial, 
and um, more from an efficiency standpoint, they're able to do some of their master's classes in undergrad and complete it quicker. Um, me, on the other hand, I'm debating actually going back and getting a master's, but I think that going to industry um, has taught me just more about the real world. It's taught me more about um, manufacturing and the actual application and how companies work just in general because as a student, yes, you have internships, but that's just a snippet. You don't get as um, good exposure as if you're there for a while. So I think that going to industry does have a benefit to actually understanding then like how systems can be applied, how you can actually apply that knowledge to a company and understand that it's larger than than just like the, the technology that a lot of it has to do with politics too is um, not only you can have an incredible solution but if people or management's not on board in a company then it probably won't be implemented. So also just learning how to navigate those waters a little bit of um, more like the political side of how to get people on board and how to present like a project or um, results in a way that people would understand. So I think there's benefits to both. Um, it kind of just depends on your career path and what, what you'd want to do. Uh, I would add that, you know, clearly there is no right answer to that, right? Uh, I, my experience was after two years, I went back to get my master's degree. I wanted to get it behind me. Uh, uh, I think, I, I, and I was very busy traveling and you know, I did an evening program, and I would, you know, I saw a lot of times where I would fly into O'Hare, go downtown, go to class, and then get out of there right away to get home and, you know, do some project late at night, like take wallpaper down or something. You know, it, was, it was endless. On the other hand, my wife, who uh, uh, was, is a, is a pharma, pharmacy grad, a Purdue pharmacy grad, went to the same school, went to Kellogg when she was... I don't know what the exact timing, 38 to 42-ish, and it was a very different experience for her. You know, she would, she had a little more flexibility, she could stay and get more involved and, and meet the professors and meet the class, and her classmates and just get, you know, get more involved. So timing and where you are in your career can have a significant impact on, on, on that experience. Generally, I think it's safe to say that more education is better, right? <laughs> I'm not going out on a limb there, right? I mean, you're going to, you're going to meet amazing people. You're going to hear amazing stories. So I would, I would encourage everybody to get some sort of graduate degree. My answer might be a little simpler. I was having a blast in 1988 and wasn't ready to go into the real world yet. <laughs> and I stayed. Uh, I think if not for my commitment with the US Air Force, I'd still be here. I'd be chasing Abby around looking for another class that I hadn't taken yet. Um, but I, 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 in all seriousness, I think it, it has something to do with what your mindset is and how you're feeling uh, after bachelor's degree. Uh, I felt like I was just starting to get the hang of it. Uh, I was trying to train myself for two, two, two and a half years at school. Uh, and then back half of junior year and senior year, I discovered this thing about educating myself. And all of a sudden, I wasn't working as hard I was having fun and the grades improved tremendously because I stopped trying to train myself and chase numbers and goals and GPAs. When I stopped doing that, all of a sudden I was getting better numbers and grades and, and GPAs. And so I, I would really recommend you to answer the second part of your question. And this is a gap I see in workforce right now because people are so anxious to apply, apply, apply. I have to apply what I'm doing and I sometimes see gaps in people who aren't yet fully educated. No theoretical background. They just want to, boom, go to the case study. And it's like, yeah, but what about some of the underlying, you know, the chemistry? People just don't remember that stuff, dealing with process, dealing with problem-solving techniques. They just so badly want to apply. And so I would really recommend take a pause here as you work through your academic career and start educating yourself first. Yes, you're going to have to apply. You know, Abby and I talked uh, a, a month ago, maybe, uh, about the initiative here at IE Now to give people research skills. 
Uh, and I, I'm really excited about that because that's kind of what I'm talking about when you sit down with a group of executives and say, how are we going to solve this problem? And they want to just come up with a tool and apply it instead of how would you do research? What 10 things would you look at and try to put together? How would you develop a hypothesis and prove or disprove it uh, to get to some kind of answer? So educate. When you're getting to the end or you have to decide about masters, if you're not done, keep going. If you think you're done and now you want to go take a drink in the real world, do that and then come back. So can I have one thing? And I'm going to take an answer from Raghav, and that's um, take the time to meet people and ask people. So talk to the faculty members. If it's even a remote possibility, you might want to do a master's or a PhD or an MBA. Take the opportunity of being on campus to find out what they're doing. Do you, do you like the kind of work that they're doing? Do you like the kind of projects that they're working on? And the same with industry. So talk to whenever you have panels like this or whenever the school brings alumni, get the chance to talk to them. Find out what it's like to be in industrial engineering in the financial sector or in healthcare or in production. So you can determine where do I, where am I going to be happy? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you want, you want to be passionate about what you do every day. Even if you change careers and if you reinvent yourself, allow the reinvent, I, I think, I hope uh, I don't get killed here by some of the other panel. I think a lot of times when you reinvent yourself because you, you sort of got selling, you want a new challenge, you want something new, but it's because exactly because they love what they do. So I would just say just make sure you take the time to Talk to those around you. There's so many people at, as regards said, there's so many faculty at Purdue. It might be that your master's is not going to be in IE. Maybe it is going to be in IE. Take the time to ask questions like you're asking the panel right now. And I guess like I'll just reinforce that. So um, I'm currently in research from this previous summer. I like absolutely like love the idea of research and like love like how it's being implemented. Um, but I was really blown away about how many people are willing to help you guys. Like it started off with like, you know what, you're my professor or you're my TA, hi, I'm Michael, and now it's like, now you're doing research. Like it's it just like having those conversations and connecting, like yeah, I'm in your class or whatever, but we have something separate I wanna do, and now, you, now, now that led you to something else. So now it's like, I guess you could say I'm like working without really working, and I'm like really enjoying what I'm doing, but that came from having that conversation, pushing yourself outside of that comfort zone. Because I will say, and like, this is something I like love about Purdue, everybody here actually wants you to succeed. It's not like, like the professors are like, oh, I'm trying to fail all these people. Or like, I need this minimum to fail. It's like, no, if you can pass, I'm going to pass you. So like, just make that connection. Like, like for me, first week, I meet all my professors on like a first name basis. Like, okay, I'm Michael, you're so-and-so. Now, now we have this relationship. So at least you know when I'm in class, like, I'm here. You know, and that, and that, that starts off with so many other different connections, so many other things that can lead to. So be like open to helping yourself by having those conversations. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Deep uh, and I'm from India. My question would be, uh, will artificial intelligence affect any kind of jobs in the IE discipline? Uh, I mean, what's your take on it? Because things are changing rapidly, uh, as you mentioned, and just want to know what you think about it. Um, I'll start off. Um, I'm gonna like, I guess be bold and say no, it's not gonna affect it because in my personal opinion, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, artificial intelligence is like a product of industrial engineering thinking. Like the idea of something like being able to have that capacity, it's like like they say, it's systems operation and it's the combination of things. So how did I get this to this and now it's one product? Right now, how, how do I get you know people and the technology that we have here, you know, like you combining with making those systems happen? And without the key component of IE and figuring out how to use the actual resources, because you can you can make a plan all day long, or you can make a tool all day long, and if you don't have the parts to make it up to like code spec whatever it doesn't exist. So you have to have like the IE come in and be like, okay, this is what we want to do. What we have to do is here. Now what we have and what we're going to do, make it happen. So I feel like in that sense, like no matter what artificial intelligence is, I mean, granted it's great, but I feel like that's like a direct product of industrial engineering. And to segue from that, I would say artificial intelligence, I don't think will take too much from IE. It's good for us. You know, if you think about it, it's going to create more opportunities for us. Think about autonomous driving, right? Like, that's the product of artificial intelligence. And, and then think about 
how that's going to how that's going to be implemented and what the impact is going to be on the society. So in industrial engineering, like I said earlier, we look at human factors and we we look at you know the impact of human machine interaction and sort of how you make that better and how you make it impactable. Because when you talk when you're talking autonomous driving, you can't really have too many mistakes and you're a lot of there's a lot of interaction between different machines and there's a lot of technology. I feel like IE will only make that better. So I don't think artificial intelligence is going to steal our jobs. I think we're going to give back a lot to artificial intelligence itself. So, Yeah, I would like to compliment that. Uh, when I was here in 1993, Dr. Yi in, in the IE faculty was already doing artificial intelligence research. So it's been, it's been around the concept and, and like both of, of the, my colleagues here have explained, it's only going to make IE better and, and give us a more opportunity when you think about, about the future, right? So it's, it's part of, of what we'll continue to improve. If I can add one thing to, to the question, and maybe it's a different viewpoint. I think it is gonna change IE from the educational point of view, because it's gonna require that we change some of the courses and embed some of those concepts into some of the curriculum that we're teaching you to make sure that we're preparing you for artificial intelligence in industry and in all the other areas. Yeah, I would view that as, as complementary to uh, the human interaction. Uh, in, in my field, you know, there are some examples, it's early yet in, in AI, but it has to do a lot with diagnosis. And, uh, you know, you're taking this big matrix of, of conditions and trying to figure out what the disease is. So AI is good for that in the sense that uh, of the 50 things it could be, you may only remember 45 of them. And so those extra five come up, but you still need that, you know, that human judgment, the ability to, maybe you have to go back and talk to the patient again to try to get some more data to hone in on that. So I view that, I think it's gonna be a good thing, uh, but it's gonna be complimentary, I, I would predict, rather than as a replacement. Here's what I like about IE education though, and some of the older alum, uh, Chime well, in, or if you disagree. Why are you looking over here? <laughs> <laughs> along, uh, along with me, never had a class in artificial intelligence. Feel like I'm fully prepared to deal with it. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Baron Yen. Uh, for those of you with the like longer, more experienced careers, with, like in multiple industries, like you know, in he healthcare and finance, <laughs> um, how was like I guess the transitions into those careers? I mean, I know IE is very flexible and stuff, but how were the tra transitions between those different industries, and how was your transition into your current position right now? Well, I'll, I'll start being up there, but you know, uh, so going from engineering, what I had to do was take a year of organic chemistry and, and a year of biology, and then I pretty much had everything, all the requisites. But when I got to medical school and doing the basic science, I got nailed on the curve, because I was competing against, uh, we had some PhDs in biochemistry in, in my class, and it was like, holy cow, I am so far behind in some of this stuff. But, uh, you know, it worked out well, and I think, you know, you, you never know how you come out compared with everybody else, but uh, I have always felt in my entire career that this engineering degree uh, allowed me to problem solve really well. And uh, although I think when you transition to something that's kind of different from what you've been doing, you're going to struggle, but you, you can do it, and I think in the end you come out stronger. It's the old, you know, steel is tempered by fire type thing. And, and I think the underlying foundation of this, of this degree allows you to just be extremely flexible. And, and the, the biggest thing is being able to problem solve because that's, that's what it's really all about. You know, Baron, I think you'd be surprised that these transitions as they're happening, you really, you really don't notice. It's not like you go home one night and say, I'm transitioning to a new discipline. <laughs> it's just, you're doing this, and then somebody asks you to do this, and then you stumble on another opportunity here, and, and you wake up 25, 30 years later and say, oh my gosh, I'm an insurance guy. How, how did that happen? I thought I was 
temporarily screwing around with insurance for a while, and then I'd go back to smokestack engineering. So it's not as pronounced as you think. You just take, apply the skills, problem solving, and it takes you where it takes you. I think one of the things that uh, a degree in industrial engineering does is gives you a lot of confidence that you can take on the next new and different challenge. And I, I think I'm an example of that. I, you know, I started in traditional engineering at Abbott Laboratories, working in the parentals area, by the way. And, uh, you know, I decided, you know, I, I don't know that I want to do this for the long term. You know, I enjoyed it and I did a couple different things. I think I was there six years. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go try consulting. So I transitioned, I, I, I landed at Ernst & Young and did that for a few years, really enjoyed it. And I learned that, wow, you know, there's the consulting part of this and there's the selling part of this. And I think I really like the sales side of it. And was just finishing up my, my MBA, met some people at IBM, and they said, hey, why don't you come work for us and, and sell? I'm like, well, yeah, that sounds pretty exciting. And I had enough confidence that Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do this, and um, I did that for I think another five or six years. IBM was going through a lot of change. We downsized from about 400,000 people to 200,000 people that one or two years, and I decided, you know, I think I'm gonna go do something different. Uh, a lot of people were being offered, uh, you know, exit packages. But the folks who had a services background because they were going through a big services transition weren't offered that. I, but I was like, oh, I'm going to go do services on my own. So I started a, a business by myself, just me. Uh, got a little bit of funding from someone. Uh, but I, I think it was my industrial engineering background and, and original training and, and, and thinking that gave me enough confidence that, hey, I can go do this. I don't there wasn't a problem. I don't know if I could do nephrology or anything, but there was, I, I wasn't afraid of tackling problems and, and problem solving because of this fundamental background. And oh, by the way, and, and it's not just industrial engineering, but when you're, when you're out in the work world and, and you know, as you get down the pike and, and people ask, oh, you know, what's your background? Where do you go to school? A, an engineering degree from Purdue University, and you already know this, that's why you're here, hugely valuable opens all kinds of doors and opportunities for you. So. And I'll, I'll just add quickly, um, the transition in some companies, they are, uh, believe it or not, B uh, Purdue engineers, of course, within that company. And uh, so you network really quickly. And, and I think uh, Mike said, uh, here there's a, they won't let you fail. So it's the same thing in, in industry. If you get the right contacts, the right Purdue uh, groups in there, They'll, they'll make your trans transition much smoother um, than, than you can expect. Of course, it's hard, and you have to really think about that first company, perhaps, that you're going to join and who your first boss is going to be, uh, because that, it can make a lot of difference in your career once you step out of here. <clears throat> we need it for the filming. <laughs> Hello, I am, is this on? Yeah. Okay. It is? Okay. Uh, I am Michael, I'm a sophomore in industrial engineering, and my question is sort of specific. I, uh, I love IE, never questioned it, but I'm also considering potentially going to med school after graduating. <laughs> I'm a... Uh, and so I was wondering if you have any words of wisdom for someone that really wants to leverage that leadership and management aspect of IE into med school. <laughs> Doc? Okay, I'll give this a shot. Um, I, I think there's probably still a, I mean, the big challenge is to get admitted. So I think uh, you still have a leg up as an engineer. Uh, that's kind of a unique entry point. But I think it's recognized in the medical profession that engineers make pretty good docs. Uh, I think you have to be kind of a human person, you, you know, not all drilled in on technical stuff, but uh, I think you've got a leg up there and, and really you got to get the grades and you got you to get that MCAT score up there and, and that's the way you get in. Uh, and then I think it's easy from there, really. It's certainly doable and you have a, I think your engineering degree gives you the ability to 
the desire maybe to understand what's going on rather than rote memorization. And there are ways to do that. And the human body does make sense. Sometimes because we wrote memorize thing, it's because we don't understand how it works. We just don't have that level of knowledge yet. But in many, many things, that level of knowledge exists. And if you can understand, and I think engineers really have a one up on that. If you understand the process, then the next time a new situation presents to you that maybe nobody has ever seen, you can figure it out. You can take the best path to try to help that patient. So, can so I go keep... for it. So go for it. <laughs> so I'll, uh, the question was not directed to me, and I'm not in the medical field. I do work for the university, so one advice that I will give you is work with your advisors. Make sure you tell them early on what it is that you want to do so that your path to graduation is structured in such a way that it sets you with the right courses to go into med school so that they can understand why you have, even your electives, even something as simple as an elective, if you chose the right elective, that might show to them that you understood from the very beginning, I know, what, I, know I want to go into med school, and, there, and I can explain to you why every single one of my courses is in there. And I think your advisors, and I think I has done a great job of doing that, I think your advisors can really help you plan that in such a way that you're, besides the MCATs and all the stores, that you have a really solid profile when you apply to med school. We can help you. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question, if I can say it. <laughs> How are IEs different than other engineers? So the you know, first year students are trying to find, make this decision. So what really distinguishes an IE from a McCann, an ME, or an E? Yeah. Um, so I would say the, I guess one of the biggest differences is the ability to take off one hat and put on a completely different hat. Ooh, sorry. So like there are majors where like you're focused down on one path and that's all you see. Like all you see is the electrical, all you see is like the mechanics of it, all you see is just like basic design. But in industrial engineering, you're able to like take your time and like if you want to do do design and then you have some like research and development. Oh, and then you do supply chain, now you're in finances, and now you're doing operations, and now you're doing system management. All in IE. Whereas other majors you, you're kinda like more set to the path. And I feel like an IE like the ability, like everybody's saying, you're able to tackle any problem. So because you're so versatile in whatever problems you can attack, you can attack it from many different perspectives as well. And having that thought on, okay, I'm going to look at this problem this way, think about it this way, and then operate in a, in a way that's like I can see the ins and outs, I can see the throughput, I can see how much it's going to cost me, where, where am I losing money, where am I saving money, like having that ability to just kind of like see the entire process from multiple perspectives, I mean, that's, that's, it's, it's the most valuable thing in my opinion. I go first. Um, so the biggest thing with IE, I think that's different, is that we're able to see things as systems, right? We're going to be able to apply it to different areas. Um, you get coursework in computer science, in mechanical engineering, um, chemical engineering. So you get to touch a lot of different disciplines, and so you have a really, really good foundation in um, and know the basics of most of the other engineers. And then because you have that knowledge, then you can use that um, and the thinking that IE gives you to be able to use that in um, thinking towards systems. Like, how do we make this into a system or how do we think of this as a system to be able to apply the principles that I learned in IE to solve it? So it's all about problem solving, how to use what you're given to help solve a bigger problem. That's it. Um, just a second from that, like there's, there's two things that really stand out, I think, about IE, and the first one I would say is personality. Uh, I feel like industrial engineers can, we're, we're people oriented, right? We're trying to make people's lives better, so not to talk any other engineering majors down, they might be doing the same thing, but I feel like in IE there's a lot of opportunity to do that, to think about you know, the customers of your product and to think about how you can improve what they're doing and make their lives better, and even in companies, like how to talk to executives and get things done, and understanding like the politics and uh, different things in your organization to like get things done. So I think industrial engineers are really good at that. 
Second, I would say like we're we're big picture oriented, right? Like we're not just building like a very small like mechanical system or a part like or you know in like an automobile or something very like specific. We're we're looking at we have the opportunity to look at the overall big picture of the business product and see like different systems that come with it and how like those systems interact. So I feel like industrial engineers are different in that regard that we're not uh, set on something very specific, but we can take a step back and say, this is the bird's eye view and this is what we're trying to accomplish and this is how we're gonna figure it out. So I think we have that leg up. Uh, I'm Will Rasmussen, and I'm a freshman in FYE right now, but I'm definitely very intrigued in IE. But um, my biggest question, I know a lot of you have stepped out of like working directly in an engineering industry aspect and into like uh, business, and I'm very interested in that in the long run. And my question is, what's the most useful thing you've learned from being in engineering industry that applies towards that business or whatever you moved into after you were done there? I would say one, one of the bigger things that I've learned is communication. So like when I was in like a process control or more IE oriented uh, server position, I learned how communication can cause a lot of problems in a company and how that can impact a lot of other things. And so if you can, and I'm, I'm not perfect, like I'm still learning it and it's, it's still a challenge for everyone, I guess. But if you can figure out how your company or even your boss wants to communicate and you communicate that and you're able to able to sort of you know eloquently say what your idea is and sort of make people understand what you're trying to do I feel like that's that's a really hard skill a lot of times I feel like younger people have good ideas but we struggle with how to implement them or how to how to have a buy-in from higher-ups and I feel like that is one skill that if you if you have it really helps people around you be successful and that that really makes you crucial as a part of the team and I think that's something that um, like I said I feel like it's not easy and it's not it's not like a class that teaches you that so it's something you just sort of learn as you go and it can go a really long way Um, so I'm actually in supply chain right now at Eli Lilly, and um, I think the, the biggest difference that I can bring that someone from a non-technical background doesn't necessarily bring is the data analytics. So um, just working a lot in Excel and just knowing the functions and um, what data to pull, how to analyze it, what metrics to use, and then how to use those metrics to help make decisions for my manager or director. Um, I think that's a new aspect that I've been able to to bring that wasn't always there. And it seems like, you know, in this world, there's, so, there's data everywhere. And I mean, we're, we talk about big data, but just in, it seems like there's a lot of times people struggle with how to analyze it. How are you actually gonna make those decisions from what comes from the data? And so I think the IE degree can help really um, understand like what data is important and then um, what you can draw from that data. I think I feel really well prepared to be able to integrate what's new in, into what is now. And sometimes you think of engineers or technologists and it's all about the new, but you got to step to the new and integrate it into what's the now. So I've spent an entire uh, work life integrating offshore processes into onshore processes and automated processes into non-automated processes. And, and th woven throughout all that is this people dynamic. So I, I, I could tell you, right, very intellectually, we could build the spreadsheet that says it's much cheaper to do, say, data processing uh, in India than it is in Boston. You can get those skills, and, and we can intellectually say that. Now go talk to 400 people how there's now going to be 100 people and 300 of those jobs offshore, and then how, how do you make that? So how do you make the, the, the integration? And, and I, I'm very thankful for my education from Purdue IE because I didn't take a class in any of that, but I feel very, very well prepared to deal with those kinds of challenges because of the education that was, 
I, I wish I could say that I pieced together. I think IE played a huge role in piecing that together for me to prepare me how to do that. And so I'm very thankful for that. I, I would say that one of the things I learned is that to the extent you want to get into a management or leadership type role, seeing and understanding the big picture becomes more and more important, right? If you think about business, there's a couple of key functions. There's research, design, development. Create the product, create the service, whatever it is, and there's a bunch of people that can do that. Industrial engineers are well suited to do that. Then there's the make it, right? We're well positioned to make it better, cheaper, faster, you know, high quality, low cost, all that. Then there's the sell it. We're well positioned to function in that uh, role as well. Then, then overlaying all that is the financial aspect of it, right? How much is it going to cost? Should we buy it? Should we make it? Should we, you know, there's legal arms. So one of the things I learned is that the more you can, o over time in your career, that, that you can understand how all these pieces fit together and that when you do things, when you design a product a certain way, it's going to affect everything downstream. If you, if you don't have the right sales process in place, you know, are you going to have a lot of salespeople? Are you going to have a few salespeople? Are you going to have a call center? Are you going to do everything face to face? The more you can see that big picture, the better position you're going to be to, uh, to, to better position you're going to be to be successful in, in leadership. And I think an industrial engineering degree is what really helped position me to to be thinking about that big picture early on. All right, Morgan. So, what are some of the resources that you you guys use to stay up to date on? like new technologies that are coming out, systems, softwares, um, like journal publications, professional organizations you're involved with, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've started reading like the Wall Street Journal every day. So like I spent a good chunk of my week in a hotel because I'm doing a consulting job. And I see everyone on my team, like whenever we like carpool together to the client, everyone like grabs the Wall Street Journal and they like, really read it, and I'm like, if I don't do it, I'm not gonna understand a lot of these things they're talking about, so I, like, that's sort of pushing me to like, stay up to date with technology. And a lot of it is that like, what's, what's going on in the industry might impact what you're doing, so it's really, like, it's really interesting to see that you're, you're part of something that's changing, that's evolving, and there's some innovation, so yeah, like Wall Street Journal, and just from that, I, I get to know what's going on and then I look it up even more on the internet and sort of see like what's going on, what's up to date and what's coming next. Um, I, I like to stay in touch a lot with my IE colleagues and professors. So once, you know, every, every, I don't know, every quarter I try and, and understand and give a call and say what they're up to. Um, and that's been helpful a lot so that all the different acronyms and changes, you're able to, to navigate through them and, and say, okay, this is what's coming and this is how I'm gonna apply it. So it's good once you are out to come back, give back and stay in touch. Uh, I, I think that's about wraps it up We're, because of our time here. I, I you know, I'm, I'm not IE. I have to be honest with you, I'm not IE, uh, but I feel very fortunate to be with this school. Uh, and I think it's people just like we're sitting down here in front that, that makes us feel so good as a school. This is not just a school, this is a family. And you're here today because the alums wanted to share their experience with you all to bring more young IEs into the fold, into the family, to improve the industry, to improve our school, to improve each other, because we are IE, right? The building could be anything, Grissom could be anything, but you make it IE. Our alums make it industrial engineering, and our alums make it the profession that it is. So we're here this morning from IEs who presented this idea of having this type of dialogue at a recent meeting we had this past summer that said, we want to be able to share our experience with the graduates. We want to recruit more students to IE, the top and the best in their field. So I think we've got some outstanding panel members. Could we give them a hand, please? And, and this is just really a snapshot 
of the 9,000 fellow alumni we have in industrial and engineering. And I can't leave this without saying this, this note on my back which says I equals CEO, just so you'll know, we did some data analysis, even though I'm just a BS guy from, <laughs> from broadcasting background. We did some data analysis on our alumni, and you know what we found? We discovered that 900, 900 of our IE living alumni are in the C-suite of their business and industry. The presidents, the CEOs, the chief executive, or the chief executive, the CIOs, the, the chairmen, the principals, those folks that make a difference in their business and industry around the world, this school alone has 900 of those. And that's something to be very proud of for these folks right here who are some of those and for our future ones sitting in the office today. Or in the office, or, yeah, it's my office, okay, so you can be in my office. But here in the audience today. So thank you all, thank you for coming. Uh, we have a barbecue back of Grissom on the piazza beginning at noon. All of you want, are invited to join, meet our mentors, talk, talk a little bit more. And uh, with that, let's just say, hey, go Boilers, yeah. beat the Wolverines, okay? <laughs> thank you all, and thank you. My freshman year, I, I played football here all four years. My freshman year, we played Michigan at home, and we beat them. Yeah. So I think it's a good, it's a good sign, it's a good omen. <laughs>